Hi, I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 8th of January, 2024. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, I'm going to be doing a walk around of the central part of Sutiava. We've done a lot of barrio walks in Sutiava over the last couple of years, but I've actually never done very much right in the center of Sutiava. And I'm doing this portion of the video right now while Insta, uh, the Insta360 is up on the tripod and we're recording a 360 video of Sutiava's central plaza and the church and me filming this for uh, Nicaragua 360. So I'm gonna be doing a little bit of filming for that channel. And while I'm out here in the beautiful plaza, which is not very often wide open as it is today, uh, I'm gonna take that chance to do some of the streets and an area right here in the middle of Sutiava and show you what the center of the barrio is like rather than we, we tend to do the streets that are much farther out uh, on the south side or far to the north. Uh, and we've done a little bit here and we've shown the church certainly many times, but we haven't really shown the streets around it. So we're gonna be off on a barrio walk today. We're gonna start uh, at the, uh, we're on Ruben Dario, the main street where you come in by uh, the asylum, come to the church, and then we're gonna explore some of these side streets. So let's get to that on today's show. We picked a really hot and bright day for doing a walk in Tutiava. The last few days have been very warm and I've been trying to avoid being out in this incredible heat, but there's no more avoiding it. We're gonna go for a walk and cook a little bit. So let's show you where we are. First, we're gonna bring up a map so you can see where we are on, uh, we're kind of downtown Tutiava. There's no like official downtown. I mean, technically this is the official downtown, but it, it doesn't feel quite exactly like it's, uh, it's downtown, but behind me, where this bus is coming from is the Mercadito. So that is the little market or the Sutiava market. No one calls it, it's Mercadito, but it is Sutiava's market. It's one of the smaller big markets of the city, but it is a, a big market. It's just smaller than the others. Behind me is the asylum. This is kind of a major point here in Sutiava. Downtown Leon is that way. If everything was clear we and we stood in the middle of the street, we could just make out the cathedral. And uh, this is northbound there westbound so Marcadito is between us and the beach so if you're gonna head out that way you'll go through that now as we turn around on the side of the asylum we have this small little market area which has always got uh, it's got first of all it's a really wide road so it's really easy to park and turn around and stuff here you'll notice that there's actually almost a circle here on two sides and then it's like a normal corner there it's a little bit weird but it, it's where the boulevard ends and becomes the market. There's always clothing for sale over here. There's some small markets there. This guy's yelling at me, I have no idea why. There's always little tricyclos so you can pick up a ride. And there's always fast food down here. And I'm afraid it's very windy, so I apologize. All right, so the microphone absolutely failed and it wasn't just kind of fail. Like at this point, it just went full on bad. So I'm gonna do my best to do a voiceover on this based on the original audio. So this is gonna be a challenge for me. I'm gonna do my best. All right, there's kiosks over here. This is like, there used to be traditional kiosks, but now there's these like kiosks in front of the kiosks and they sell clothing and food and, and different things. They're, they're always there. They're almost part of the market. This is the Iglesia of Sutiava. This is the main church. We show it a bit. Also known as Jean Baptiste. We're coming up on the, the fast food there's a French fry place down there. So this is Nicaraguan fast food, and you're gonna see this all over the country, and especially here in Leon, it's absolutely everywhere. Uh, there's a line of them over here, and then as we look towards the park, they're all along the front of the park. Now right now, there's only a few. When there's like a carnival or something, there's going to be a ton of them. I decided there was no way for me to listen to the audio and do a real-time voiceover, so I'm redoing as best I can my narration. So it's gonna be completely different than the original. So I'm showing there's Mexican and pizza and hamburgers and like those places are always here. And when it gets busy, then a bunch of other places come in and you get a bigger variety of food, although a lot of it's duplicated as well. And then the line down there, which is always there, there there's Toto on the end, which is really well known. They're, they're kind of like a chain actually, <coughs> at least around the city, if not around at least part of the country. And then there's some other places next to them. And like fried chicken is one of the things that's always available there. And this is a big area that you can park in as well. So like this is very easy. 
for managing if you're coming in for fast food. So this actually becomes a little bit of a community hub here in Sutiava because you're able to come and get food and and hang out and there's like a, a big variety of stuff that generally if you're looking around Sutiava you're not going to find. Most of Sutiava doesn't have a ton. That is the asylum over there and uh, this is the north side of the church. That's Ruben Dario with the traffic up there where we just came from. Lots of food options. When, when it gets busy, when there's events, when there's carnivals or a, cir a circus or a big community procession or whatever, lots of vendors pile into this space and it becomes very popular. Um, and it's uh, in, the, in this plaza area. Uh, they also set up uh, uh, bars and, and like more official restaurants and they'll put up tents and they'll put up fences around them and actually have an entire restaurant area. It's actually really interesting uh, what they do with that and, and what it's like. So it, it, it's a cool part of the community that we have this area where so many food and drink options pop up and many, and it's, it's quite regular. Now this is early in the day, this is Sunday, uh, and I'm recording this pretty much around noon. So almost nothing's open at lunch. Uh, but by mid to late afternoon, uh, these places are going to start to straggle open one at a time. And by evening, essentially all of these will be open. So this is uh, quite a big area. And there I'm showing this is where the bars would be lining the plaza around the back edges. Um, on the far side of the plaza there is the museum we're going to see that later that's the sutiava museum and this is another we think it's a museum but we don't really know that's the colonial building uh, that we're heading towards the church is on the left tricyclo coming by this one uh in yellow uh right here the one number two i have a hard time reading it it's it's Topa number two, I believe. Uh, we actually filmed them in an episode with Marcella's daughter, Valentina. Uh, she got a hot dog there, so we showed the hot dog making there. They do a really good job. And it's worth noting that some of these places, like the Mexican place on the end and Topa 2, uh, they will do delivery with Pedidos Ja. So you can, um, you can sometimes go online when they're open and get delivery uh, from some of these kinds of places as well. Now here in Nicaragua, this is what we call fast food. We have McDonald's, we have Burger King, we have several places like that, but by and large, uh, those places aren't what we think of as fast food. We think of these things as fast food, and those are we more like a table service restaurant. They're a little bit fancy, they're a little bit special, uh, so we don't tend to, to think of them as fast food. When, when you say fast food here in Nicaragua, this is what you think of. Now this guy on the right comes up and harasses me a little bit, so I had to, I had to trim the video. Sorry about that. And uh, now we are heading southbound on, uh, I believe this is uh, Sutiava uh, 12th Avenue, southbound. Uh, and we're gonna, um, I think that's right. I'm gonna double check it as we get farther down. Uh, this wall here on the right, I believe this is a school. Uh, that's behind the museum. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, it, that's what it, I think it shows on the map. Um, a lot of schools and a lot of different things are not labeled, so you're always kind of kind of guessing. Now, this is a pretty nice neighborhood. This may not look that fancy. This is a utility building, not a house that I'm about to show, uh, but this area is actually very desirable because you're right off the main square. You're right next to the church. We did not like living next to a church in Sutiava because of the, uh, I'm sorry, in La Maria because of the noise. But in general, living near a church is considered a very good thing. I was pointing out here the wall there, uh, their hedgerow is really nice. This is a, a interesting little shop there. Now it's like a pulperia or something, uh, but that's like a, a garden hedged in there on the left. Uh, but this neighborhood, while you're going to have a lot of really old houses, uh, is a very desirable neighborhood because of its location, because of how close you are to so many things, because it is a sleepy area. It's um, it, it's definitely something that residents would be seeking uh, pretty heavily. We have an attractive, you know, quite a few attractive housing. That one on the corner there is quite nice. Very little is going to be really large. Um, very little is is really fancy. This is not 12. I'm going to have to look up what street this is, uh, but. Um, this is this is certainly an area where um, you, you. I'm sorry. This is 14th. That's the one that we're on currently. Now we're heading east. On uh, I'm going to make sure I get this right. On second, 
And we, I had to come down just a little bit. Now we're heading, I'm sorry, that was west on second. Now we're heading east on second. I had to step down off that ledge and I didn't want to jump on the video. So that's why we went that way. Because I wanted to head down this way just a little ways because I didn't know where something was that I was looking for and I was turned around. So I went down here to try to find something and did not. <laughs> but uh, this is now um, 2nd Street Southwest, but we are heading east on it. You can see some, some pretty decent houses along here. Almost all are pretty small and everything's very old. This is, to the best of my knowledge, not officially designated as a colonial neighborhood. Uh, so I think if you were to build new, you I think you have some flexibility. Um, and I'm pretty sure you can make a lot of changes if you if you take an existing structure. Uh, but this is a the very oldest part of Sutiava, and this is a very important large part of the city. Uh, there's a pulperia on the left, kind of attractive. There's some nice houses like there on the left, not not bad at all. Another pulperia, and uh, so in this this neighborhood, you tend to have very old houses. Now this house on the corner is for sale. This is a former doctor's office. It's very small, right? So. Uh, pay attention to just how tiny it is, but it's blue and gold. Uh, it looks well-maintained from the outside. Uh, it's got the name of the original business on it, uh, but I don't know what it was. Um, we're just south of the church. If we look north here, you'll see, you can kind of make out up there, there's some trucks and stuff in the distance. That is where the church is on the left. So this is 13th Avenue. Uh, southwest, and that's kind of looking south. We're going east again. The pink building there, the both the one on the right and on the left, nice houses, older buildings that have been uh, well well taken care of. A lot of older buildings that have not been well taken care of. That's that's to be expected. Um, no no getting around that. There's there's going to be lots of lots of stuff falling down or whatever all over. But there are nice things mixed all through. Um, but overall, this is a very safe neighborhood. It's a very nice neighborhood. Uh, it's relatively quiet. While there is also <laughs> a lot of wind, you can see there in the trees. But there's a uh, an attractive greenhouse there on the right. Um, and we're going to look at this one on the left on the way back. You can see it's construction a little bit. We're past it now. And um, there's a lot of activity in the street, which is really interesting. I think when you're when you're looking at a neighborhood like this uh, compared to, for example, something in the US, and there's another little shop there uh, on the right, and a attractive, very nice house here on the left. I think this is actually two houses next door. You get a lot of times you get that where like two or three together, quite nice, interesting steps there, nice design, good trees, lots of lots of shade and older stuff here. Decent houses on the right as well. Another shop there. Um, you get, compared to the United States, you get a lot of activity on the street, a lot of people walking, um, a fair number of just people driving by, but slowly, uh, a lot of people sitting outside. So there's a lot of activity. If you're out, okay, so this one I wanted to show, it's set back. I like this design a bit. They have a nice driveway. There's a little kitty hiding in the corner. Then we're gonna pop back. Yep, there you like, oh, there's a kitty. There's a kitty, hello kitty. Um, another nice one here. Uh, you, you just have a lot of outdoor life going on. It's uh, an interesting change from the United States where a neighborhood like this would either be very loud, very packed, a nice place there in the corner again. Um, and then, so this is 12th Street and I look south here a little bit and there's a beautiful aquamarine, I'm almost gonna say mansion down here uh, on, the, on the left coming up. And I just wanted to pop down and see this it's about halfway down the block, and it's just absolutely cool looking. I've never been in. I don't know whose house this is, but I've been by this several times this week. Pulperia there on the left before the house. And uh, I had gotten a look at it, and I rarely come down 12th uh, before this week. And so I was not really aware of this house. And this is a fantastic example of just how nice you can update something in the barrio. So we're in the heart of the barrio, and this is a modern take on traditional Nicaraguan architecture. So this is a beautiful modernish house, but it is very much in a Nicaraguan style. It fits in the neighborhood. It looks great, well-maintained. Um, and that's something that you could easily uh, do with a place that you're looking at um, for yourself. If you were looking, whether it's an empty lot, you're gonna build something new and just have this kind of style to fit into the neighborhood. 
or uh, you wanted to take something that was pre-existing and, and update it or modernize it or upgrade it, uh, this is a, a style that would go over really well and fit with the neighborhood, which is generally important. Not 100% of the time do you want to fit with the neighborhood, but sometimes you do. Now this house on the corner I wanted to look at just because it's really interesting architecturally. Notice the roll off roofs on the side, garden in the back, very small. This is a very old kind of falling down, very uh, inexpensive house. Not, I'm sure none of my audience are looking at that, but it's uh, it's a cute part of the neighborhood um, and uh, just just a neat house. So now we're gonna head back west. I was kind of I wanted to look for something. I didn't find it. We're we're gonna find the thing that I'm looking for later in the video. There goes the the horse. <laughs> Always horse traffic everywhere in Nicaragua. And uh, we're heading back the way we came a little bit before we dive south and go through uh, some more of the, the, the barrio of Sutiava that we really haven't seen previously. All right, we are westbound on 2nd, uh, and we're heading uh, back towards the church. We're, we're not quite south of the church uh, at this point. Oh, another dog on the street. And another little shop there on the left. And uh, not a ton of traffic. So we're heading towards 13th Avenue. We had just been on 12th. So this house on the right, this is the one I talked about when we went the other direction. We can see a bit of the construction here. So notice that it's it's um, bricks and cinder on the one side and on the front, it's bricks with wood in between. Very interesting. You're gonna see a lot of that kind of construction in these older colonial houses. So you don't have to, as far as I know, build that way. If you're building new, there's no requirements like that to the best of my knowledge. You do have to make things in some parts of the city, not here, look stylistically like other things. I don't believe that's true in Sutiava. Don't take my word for it. All of these houses are quite old. That doesn't mean that you necessarily would have to do old if you were building here. Um, but you can see that so many of them like stylistically just blend right from one to another, disrupting that maybe a, a big negative. You'd want to definitely play into the style a bit. So we're taking a turn here. That is the uh, the house that is for sale. We saw it coming the other direction. It's got the historical marker on the corner. And this should be uh, 13th and we're heading south. That building on the left is labeled as the Sweet Bakery online. But I saw nothing of that uh, actually, actually there um, on the building. So I have no idea if that is current or what that is. So this is southbound on 13th um, and we're heading uh, towards 5th Street. So this is a little bit confusing, uh, at least according to Google, there's nothing between 2nd and 5th. The numbers go directly from 2 to 5. Um, a whole bunch of the numbers in other parts of the city are there uh, and, and they just disappear. There's fewer streets out here and so the numbers get a little bit wonky so that they are consistent through the city. Not every source agrees on the street numbers, so don't take that 100% as uh, gospel, but I believe that to be true. Pulperia there on the right. There's a number of shops here. There's like three all together. And this one, this house, uh, that guy was totally just talking to someone who was not there. It was crazy. That is a, a pretty cool two-story house, um, certainly a barrio house, but uh, a little bit different than other things. Through bits of... Sutiava, you run into a lot of, you can see there, a lot of different elevation changes. And so you have some houses that are built to deal with that. Some areas are flat and some, which we're going to see, have a lot of elevation change. Through this area and some of the some of the bits we're going to go to, so this is 5th, we're crossing, we're heading south on, on 13th still as we cross 5th. And uh, now we're turning around. And uh, uh, this area really, I felt was quite reminiscent of La Paz Centro. Very much the same, where you have these big elevation changes and the houses are partially built up on, on top of higher ground and the road is on lower ground. So it's uh, very similar. I mean, obviously that's not far away, right? That's our neighboring city uh, outside of Leon, little dog on the porch there. And uh, so you're gonna see certain styles recur, but this feels much more like one of the smaller uh, country cities rather than like Leon proper uh, through this part of Sutiava. So just interesting, um, I think stylistically there. Nice house there on the right. Lots of foliage through here, good shade. You can tell, look at these streets. This is middle of the day on a Sunday, so this is not rush hour by any stretch, but this is so quiet and tranquilo. It's very nice. 
Now here on the left, so there's like a cluster of pretty nice houses here. So I was like, how am I gonna show these? So the low house on the left and this tall green one, definitely interesting. And then on the right, this greenhouse has like this interesting kind of diagonal porch area in front, all three quite nice. And then there's a pulperia on the corner that's, uh, that's, that's kind of nice. We're gonna see that in a second. But I spotted, there's the pulperia on the left. They're diagonally across the intersection. This is a lot for sale. So this is actually a really nice location. And this is the corner of, at least according to Google Maps, the southwest corner of 5th Street and 14th Avenue, both southwest. So this is a reasonable size. This is like a full corner lot, completely open. There's the, the walls from the two next door houses and the uh, just a wall against one street and then just fence on the front. It's grass right now. You could do essentially, as far as I know, anything you want with this. This is a really great location. It's a quiet area. It's directly south of the church. So this is an absolute prime spot, two blocks south of the church. Like you can't ask for too much more of a, of a nice location for a quiet neighborhood in the city. Imagine what you could do there. That's enough floor space that you could put in a really good size one story and imagine how good of a size two-story house you could put in there. You could do something really nice as long as you aren't constrained by any uh, colonial requirements. You can see from other houses next door, there you can see the church right there, right? And this beautiful greenhouse on the corner. Um, from that two-story right there, if you were to build something of that similar footprint, but in that larger corner lot, you could have so much visibility, so much airflow. I mean, someone who wanted to put something really nice there could have an epically nice house you couldn't be outrageously large but you could be unreasonably large i mean that is look at how big that floor space is and if you took that the two floors two stories even if you put a garage in there you would have potentially a lot of space you could do something really nice and in a such a cool neighborhood just quiet but walking distance to all that fast food walking distance to the marketito um for me walking distance to the downtown restaurants good delivery for everything this is a that's a nice lot. I'm surprised that hasn't been snatched up, but who knows what they're asking or who knows who's seen it, right? Always a challenge in Nicaragua is that everything is who has stumbled upon and noticed that the lots exist. It's uh, sometimes a challenge. This kind of sucks. I came by all the little places like this. Everybody said hi and waved and talked to me. And of course we lost all the audio. So that's terrible that that's gone. Cute. I like how they do those trees, the little planters and the the square top trees. There's a lot of that around Leon, especially in the barrios. I think it's a very attractive uh, uh, grounds keeping kind of thing. Gives really good shade and nice little spots to walk around. See it a lot in the northern barrios, uh, kind of northwest of Saragossa quite a bit. Now this place on the left, uh, when I was walking here, I was reading it. It's, it's Juan somebody's Esquina. The E is missing, so it looks like it says Esquina, but it's Esquina, which just means corner. And as far as I'm pretty confident, this was a restaurant back in the day. Look at that big patio space going around on the outside. You could easily have restaurant tables going around that. Um, it has good shade. The building itself, yeah, they're pointing to it, um, has, uh, you've got that grass between it and the street. Like it is set back. It is perfect for a, uh, for a restaurant or like a cafe, like really nice. Um, currently, I think it's just a house. There on the left, we've got a nice greenhouse. I think we're going to come by a little bit. It's got, look in front, it's got some trees and a little bit of grass on that raised patio area. And then it's quite large. If you look, it's a double lot. So that's why they, they were willing to give up that frontage space. It's set back almost an, an entire house width. I'm sure that's not actually an entire house width, but it's set back a significant amount. And then it's a good size house with a good size garage space behind it. You'll see there's how far back the garage door is to, to that greenhouse. So that's, that's a good spot right there. I, I was pretty confident when I was there that that is the garage door for that house, not the next one. Um, you can see how far the next one would be. So that's, uh, that, was, that was an impressive little spot there. Once upon a time, I believe uh, that was a liquor store, is what, is what the maps say. Sometimes the maps get pretty wonky. It, it can be pretty hard to figure out uh, what used to be where. Got a couple attractive houses 
Here, it's like four in a row, at least. Pretty nice houses, great condition, good frontage. Nothing uh, overly fancy, but this, this whole area looks pretty nice. That dog is definitely having a nice afternoon. I called and said hello to this family and they all ignored me. And then the grandmother, as I got past, was like, hey, hello. So I turned around. Good shade on the street. This is a nice part of the barrio. Like I said, this is this is a desirable area. It's it's relaxed, it's quiet, but it is still very centrally located, uh, giving you just a lot of a lot of options and, and flexibility if uh, if you're looking for tranquil but centralized city living. It is a, a quite a nice spot. So we're coming up on 16th. This is uh, the corner of 5th Street and 16th Avenue. Cute little shop there on the corner. That's a pulperia. The house itself, nothing special as far as I can tell. But they did a really nice job with a little fence and a little a thing in front. Now, check out this. I don't know what chupetas are, but they have something with a base of milk with all these different flavors, Oreo, caramel, uh, mango, uh, fresa is strawberry, frappe is coffee, mani is peanut, naranja, orange, and then without leche, without milk, fruit punch, uh, orange, lime, mango, kalala is uh, passion fruit, uva is grape, pina is pineapple, uh, Pretty nice. nice, nice selection of something. I don't know what those are. I kind of want to try them, but I need, uh, I need someone who, who <laughs> knows what to do uh, in order to stop and, and really have that conversation. Um, nice looking house here on the right, little sidewalk area. It's a little bit dirty. They're a little bit lacking in concrete sidewalk, I think right here. Not dirty per se. Heading north on 16th now. My goal is to come up on some of the other sites of Sutiava. There's another uh, religious structure apart from the uh, Iglesia that uh, I'm hoping to see. This is a street I have not been on. A lot of these streets I, I cross every now and then. 16th is not one I have walked. We've not shown it on the show. There's a pharmacy there on the right, which is, of course, not on the maps. This street is starting to get a little bit deep. You'll notice that everything has steps on both sides going up. So it feels, really from the video, you don't notice as much. I love the style here. This is very stylistically Sutiava. So I know we kind of pan past pretty quickly, but check out these red and yellow, I'm sorry, red and blue tiles um, or paint on, on the tiles there, on the bricks there, wow. Um, neat style. Uh, so all of this is raised. It feels a little bit like you're going through a canyon. Everything on both sides is at least a meter above the road, uh, maybe more. So during a rain, I guarantee this is like flood and, you know, the houses will be fine, but the street must be absolutely crazy. You can see how high that drain pipe is that we just passed on the right. We're coming up to kind of a cool corner. This is where 16th comes across 2nd Ave. That's a nice one on the corner and a little dog here. He has a friend who's following me. They're all excited to see each other. So this place on the corner is cute. Look at that curved bench going around on the street. That's really nice. Like this did a cool thing. That is a band pro agent across the street. So it's like a little, um, you do like your private banking there. You can go pay your bills or whatever, make a deposit uh, kind of stuff. And uh, kind of a wooded corner there. While I'm here, I discover <laughs> that my camera's gonna overheat. So I was, I was about to take a break and my camera was being pushed right to the limit. And I was starting to worry that it was gonna Gonna overheat any second, but this is such a cool spot. I wanted to show this house again, see a little bit of it. And then this one on the other corner I discovered is really cool. Uh, look at that curved fencing going around. Now that corner door is wood, but imagine if you replace that with glass, that would look beautiful. There's nice wrought iron on the windows, good uh, plants and stuff. Now it's funny, while I'm filming this, trying to show to you, um, oh, and by the way, on top of that uh, kind of patio on the right uh, near where the, the wooden corner doors are is grass. 
So very cool. The owner of this house was actually behind me uh, and came up and introduced himself. That is where the camera died right there. And uh, <clears throat> he came and talked to me and I'm gonna walk down the street just a little way. So this is eastbound on 2nd Street. Uh, where I figured out that a restaurant that I've been looking for should be in front of me. And so I'm heading the uh, east to try to see if we can find it, because uh, this is what I was looking for earlier uh, and did not manage to find. So we're, we're off on an adventure. And I'm noticing from the map, a lot of the houses along the stretch are at a very slight angle. 5 to 10% off from True. I'm not sure what caused that to happen, but they're lined up very oddly for a little bit. And you can kind of see it as I walk past them. Their fronts are not exactly flush with the street. And they're all set back just a little bit. All right, here we go. And there's the restaurant I've been looking for, Los Pescaditos, the little fish. So it's clearly labeled as a restaurant, but there's nothing there, no tables, no anything. So as far as I know, this is still an open and operating restaurant, but I don't really actually know. <laughs> I've been told that this is a very famous uh, restaurant, fish restaurant, seafood restaurant here in Sutiaba, and it's one of the the like main restaurants of the barrio um, and people from all over the city supposedly come to eat there. Uh, but of course there's no website, there's no anything. It is completely word of mouth uh, as many things are here. Um, the GoPro is having a little bit problem with the walking, it's shaking a bit. Uh, and so I don't know, I, I assume it's open, but you know, you can't go on uh, Google, you can't go on a website, you can't go on Instagram, anything like that with these, these like barrio locations, they work by word of mouth. There is absolutely no online presence uh, in most cases, definitely not in this one, I've looked it up many times. Uh, so you are completely dependent on either word of mouth to keep you up to date or stopping in and just taking your chances and seeing what you find, so that's, that's always a bit frustrating in Nicaragua that there's so much that isn't online, so much you can't look up, so much you have to know. Um, and I wonder how many really amazing things do we miss everywhere because, you know, we're, we're in a place and it's like, oh, you, who knew that there was an amazing restaurant uh, in this barrio that you've never been to? And, and even if you find it, who knows if it's open or, or anything? And it would be so nice if there was a directory and, and you could be like, oh, there's this amazing restaurant around the corner that no one knows about. Let's go check it out. Imagine how much more business these places would get because uh, there are a lot of travelers and a lot, you know, not just foreign travelers, but, you know, like me coming from one part of Nicaragua to another, I don't want to necessarily eat at the, you know, main restaurant on the square. I want to go to the place that the locals go to that only the locals know about, just a little, little you know, dive bar or whatever. And uh, sure, if you walk by and happen to see it open, uh, so this place I wanted to show. So this place sells uh, stuff for like restaurants or kitchens. So it's plates, forks, spoons, napkins, straws, that kind of stuff. Um, so coming up here on the right, you can kind of see that there's going to be some green space up here. And we're heading north on 16th again, just in case you weren't keeping track. Here, we've come up on the ruins of the Ermita de Veracruz or the Hermitage of Veracruz. So this is uh, interesting in a couple of ways. One, this is an important uh, former Catholic site. I mean, it's still Catholic, but it's a former site of Catholicism here in Sutiava. This is a hermitage, but the hermitage is destroyed. I don't know any of its history. I hope at some point I can find out some history, maybe get in here and we can get a tour of it or whatever. You can see it there kind of on the right this ruins and then this beautiful like park area around it. So we're just one block, right? one block from the plaza, two blocks from the church, uh, which is kind of off to the left there. It's, it's in front of us and to the left. And uh, so this was part of a whole complex that was here at one point in the, in the distant past. Um, but uh, I just don't know what happened and why such a major, because we'll see a little bit more later. This was a really major structure, why it disappeared. I don't know why the GoPro is having such a hard time. It's, it's smoothing out algorithm is really struggling right now. Uh, and so this was, um, it seems like a, a large 
hermitage with a large bit of grounds that seem to have been associated with it. All this park area was around the hermitage. And of course, not that long ago, a lot of this, I mean, of course there were houses right here, but the houses didn't go very far here not that long ago because this is, uh, you know, the city has grown up uh, significantly. So this would have been pretty far towards the edge of town not that long ago. Now this is First Street that we've come up to, 16th looking north there. There's West on First. And uh, we're going to here in a second take a right and go east on First along the Ruinas de la Ermita de Veracruz. Now notice that there's a lot of pavers in town, but it is cobblestones right around the church area. So the very old part of town is all cobblestones. And the GoPro is really struggling for a long period of time. This is the 12, so I really expect them to have these, these kinks ironed out quite a bit. That is, from what I can tell, that is a public uh, uh, preschool. Uh, it's got some information on it that suggests to me that it is run by the city, um, and it's a preschool. And uh, I'm sure it's open, but it's a Sunday, so everything's closed right now. And this is right across from the ruins of the Hermitage. And then the church is off to our right, just up there. Here you can see, hopefully, through the fence, a bit more of the remains of the structure back there. It was clearly a large stone structure. It took a lot for that to disappear. So I keep meaning to say, this is the Hermitage of Veracruz. Now, of course, the Reparto of Veracruz is just kind of behind us, or west on first. So the opposite direction on first than we're currently walking, we're only a few blocks from Reparto Veracruz. So that name clearly comes from these ruins, or oddly, uh, perhaps at, originally Veracruz was considered to have come this far east, and this was the barrier that the church of, of Sutiava was, was just to the west, and, and Veracruz is just to the east, but now, at least under the way it is generally accepted, it is several more blocks west, uh, still is Sutiava, and Veracruz does not start uh, for some distance. Uh, and without through roads. So um, I don't believe this is named after the Reparto of Veracruz. I think the Reparto of Veracruz is named because it sits on that side of the church towards the Hermitage. That's that's the story I'm sticking with. We'll try to, to research that later. This is the fire station, the Bomberos. Much more modern here. Got a couple cool houses. This would be a neat area to have a house for real. Uh, over here on the left, you can see it, this large building. We're going to see a lot more of it. That's the museum. That is the, the Sutiava Cultural Museum and Cultural Center. So there's a lot of uh, public events happen there. The cobblestones were driving me crazy, so I came over to the sidewalk. Um, but these houses along here, like this is kind of a cool spot to have a, to have a house. Um, because it's, it's just such a quiet area, but it's so beautiful with all these old colonial structures, the museums, the church. However, you would live more or less kitty corner to the park, which a lot of the time is great, but some of the time, and more than you might <laughs> guess, is a giant party going on, and so that can be tough. You can see into the museum a little bit there, big courtyards, lots of open air, of course. So there's the plaza, you can see the church. There's the corner. That is uh, 15th Avenue, heading south that we see there. And we're going to head north on 15th along this museum. She had headphones in and was singing there <laughs> on the side. There's the church. Here's the main entrance. Again, it's Sunday. Everything's closed. Community Museum and the Cultural Center of Sutiava. It's a good sized museum, especially for how small Sutiava is. This is the kind of place that, you know, I talk about a, a fair amount when we're in these kind of situations that 
Um, I, I really want to come check this out. I want to come visit the museum, film the museum, uh, because these little community museums are so important and special and uh, hold information and history that you really don't get anywhere else and things that are really designed for the local kids, not so much designed even for uh, Nicaraguans who may visit from other places, but, but a lot for the local community to kind of engage with their own history and legacy. Now, this is, to the best of my knowledge, the special school, Escuela Especial. Uh, up in Marcadito, you just see this as a big wall that we drive by, and it's got a lot of trees, so we kind of ignore it. But there's a school bus in there, there's some administration buildings, and you can kind of see where I'm pointing. There's like benches and an actual school building up there. And uh, there's actually quite a barrier between those buildings and the wall in the front. Like the whole thing's quite big. Now looking up, that is Marcadito. That is the eastern edge of Marcadito. We're looking north on 15th. You can see some stalls along the building there, along the asylum. That is where I'm pointing, is the southeasternmost uh, shopping stalls of the Marcadito. There's the park. Now we're gonna head south on 15th again. Uh, so that is uh, just the edge. Marcadito goes for another one or two blocks uh, west from that corner up there. And it, and it goes, I guess, a tiny bit to the east, but only, I don't know, 20 meters, 30 meters. A uh, couple couple little fruit stands and then it ends. Um, but that's that's where that pops out. So if you're driving on Ruben Dario on the main drag through, this is actually a street that you come by. You can really see inside the, the guy working wave to us. And... Uh, you can see down the street, but it's so narrow and so nondescript that you kind of feel like it's not something that you would turn into, but actually you totally can, and it comes right here along this museum. But all of this area with the cobblestones, for the most part, doesn't get a lot of traffic. There's always somebody, like this motorcycle, there's always a truck coming through from time to time. Um, but in general, there's not a lot of traffic because it's, it's, a, it's this weird, quiet area and the cobblestones make it really annoying to come through for the most part. That guy in the, the tricycle there must be having a terrible time pushing through the cobblestones, poor guy. I love this plaza. They do such a good job here. All right, we're going to head south just a little bit on 15th because there's something down here I want to show you guys because I wasn't 100% sure where things are. I've been down here before, but it's been a while and it wasn't on foot. I didn't bring the camera. So right here on the right, this is not what I'm here to show you, but right here on the right is a dentist office. This is often where things are hiding, right? So doctors, lawyers, dentists, that kind of stuff often are just on the, like, you got to know where to go, right? They're so hidden. It's so... Odd. For Americans, that is so completely not where a dentist would be that it throws you off a lot that that is the standard. All right, so this area with the black fence and the, the kind of, there's a sign there. This is Twins. This is a good-sized restaurant. Um, we came here almost two years ago. It has been quite a long time since we came here. And if you ever hear us making the Muy Fanta or K Fanta joke, uh, this is the restaurant where that comes from. It's totally an inside joke. I'm not going to explain it because it doesn't make any sense to anybody. Uh, but if you ever hear me say it, that is where it's from. Maybe I'll explain it at some point. It's a really stupid joke. There's no reason to even mention it. But uh, so this restaurant is funny because it's a full size restaurant. Like this is a complete restaurant like you would expect in the center of Leon. But it's way out here in this weird part of Sutiava. And this is, okay, so this building next to it is a distributor's headquarters. Like also strange to find here. Um, and uh, so Twins Restaurant is you go into it and it's completely not what you're expecting in any way, shape or form. It's such a complete normal restaurant, not a barrio thing at all. And they actually advertise on billboards on the east side of Leon before you come into the city. They, they have these ads, come to Twins Restaurant, like point you through the barrios, like drive through the barrio, down to Zutiava, find us on 15th. Like it's so funny that they that they decided to be located here and are trying to direct traffic there. They're very hard to find anything about, but I stumbled on them online at some point, and several of us came down and had dinner there a couple of years ago, and uh, that's how we found it. So it just it really interesting that like you would never guess that there would be a restaurant like that here. It's not the kind of place that we would necessarily go to very often, but it's nice to know that it exists. It's just interesting all all around. Uh, so this is the park. So over here on the right, these are old colonial buildings and I'm not 100% sure what all this is. 
So I'm doing my best from what Google Maps has said, from what I've been told, and, and kind of guessing. So first of all, there's three houses here on the corner, right against the square. These guys, these aren't the, the biggest, fanciest houses, but boy, did they luck out with location. Like, that's pretty cool. This first colonial structure, so it's, it's like one giant colonial structure, but the first half of it is listed online as the Colegio Parroquiales Santa Lucia, which is basically the Catholic high school Santa Lucia. Uh, and I'm pretty sure that's what it is. You see a ton of students uh, coming out here at different times. And then the second part, you can see that there's a, a high uh, patio on one side and not on the other. The one without it is the high school, is the colegio. This other part is listed as the Casa Cural de Sutiava and or Museum of Sacred Art. The Museum of Sacred Art might be a separate building behind it, but I think the whole thing is... Um, I believe Casa Cural de Sutiava is its official name, and I think the Museum of Sacred Art is its nickname, um, but who knows? So if there really is a Museum of Sacred Art, um, I really hope to come take a tour and bring you guys along with the camera and see that all, but I have to have a native speaker, um, and not just a Spanish speaker, but I need someone from Nicaragua that knows like enough cultural history to be able to kind of engage and converse on all this to, to help me give a tour and explain to them what we're doing and everything. But uh, I really do want to show off uh, Sutiava and, and, and explore this a bit. So my plan is to, to do that sometime soon, but that's what that is. Uh, so this is now, uh, that street on the left side of the screen is 14th heading south. And it's a little bit uh, not straight through it, it jags just a tiny bit. So this is also 14th that we're walking on that runs between the Central Park and the church. So we're coming up on the end of our walk. Sorry for the audio problems and the, and the dub over. Hopefully that worked out okay. But thank you so much for joining me. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, that would mean so much to me and everyone. Help make this all possible. And before I talk about that, here is Mexican food. They're just arriving and setting up. You can see the menu and how this, like this is like, I don't know, two o'clock, they're getting ready for dinner. And uh, uh, it really means a lot to, to me and my crew and everyone who's, who's putting in effort to make this happen. Um, all these cameras and stuff, which are arriving tonight, by the way, I have to go pick up Paul. Uh, only one hour after the, time, after the time I'm doing this audio voiceover, I am in a mad rush to get this uploaded for you. So if you're watching this on Monday morning, know that Sunday night I was in a panic trying to get this for you at the very last second. And uh, so you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. That comes uh, and helps pay for the cameras, which are arriving tonight, and the computers and the software so that we're able to make this show. And uh, if you could like, subscribe, share on social media, Tell your friends and family about the show. Anyone who might be interested, let them know that they can explore Nicaragua, Central America, Latin America, along with us in this daily tranquilo adventure. And I will see all of you tomorrow.